everyone. I'm Denise Garth, Chief Strategy Officer at Majesco, and you're listening to the Future of Insurance Industry Leaders podcast series. Follow along as I interview the best and brightest leaders in the insurance industry and insure tech landscape to bring you the latest in digital transformation, innovation, industry trends, challenges, and opportunities, as well as next-gen technologies. We use our experience to anticipate what's next without losing sight of what's now. Stay tuned to find out your next now. Welcome, everybody, to today's podcast in our Future of Insurance Industry Leaders here at Majesco. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have Stacey Shaw, the CIO at MMG Insurance, joining me today. MMG has been a customer of Majesco for quite some time, and Stacy and I have been known to have some real fun having conversations around interesting ideas and has been a, a great advocate in looking at where the industry is going. So Stacy, welcome. Thank you, Denise. Great to be here. So why don't you give a little background on yourself, Stacy, also MMG and our partnership and what you guys are doing over there. Absolutely. So I've been CIO here at MMG Insurance for 24 years in multiple different technology positions. We are headquartered in northern Maine and do business in five states. We're about a 55-45% personal lines to commercial lines mix of products. We've been working with Majesco for several years now and at this point have implemented the Majesco suite, billing policy and claims. We've also implemented uh, their EDW product, as well as our Live with Digital First. I had the opportunity and the pleasure to be there in Maine with you guys a, a few years ago, both Ed and I did, uh, speaking with your board, kind of talking about where the industry is heading. By the way, beautiful, beautiful area for anybody who hasn't been there. It's absolutely stunning. But as you kind of look back at that conversation we had uh, with your leadership team and the board and where the industry is today, and where you guys are in your transformation, what stands out that influenced your plans and approach? And what do you see different? And where do you guys kind of see you going? I still remember that meeting, Denise, and you and Ed coming up here. It was a great meeting, great chance to visit with both of you. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> so It was. <laughs> a lot's happened since then. It has. And it's a great question to really think about. A couple of things that jump to my mind are going in eyes wide open with some of these core business transformation initiatives is so important. So understanding what you're getting into is vital. We had multiple conversations with different peers in, in our industry and certainly industry analysts were very helpful as well. And then aligning with some key vendors and analysts that share your values was very important to ongoing success. Majesco certainly is one of those key vendors that we're working with right now. The conversations in these programs are tough. They're lose sleep kind of tough. They're lose your hair kind of tough. The relationships that you develop are just foundational to moving through those difficult conversations and arriving positive outcomes. So um, those are just a couple of things that, that jumped to my mind that we've learned as we've been going on this journey as foundational things that we need to continue to focus on as we continue to work through our program. Yeah. And I think one of the things I remember from that conversation is that the pace of change and the, the breadth and depth of change within the industry, I think everybody kind of knew it, but I think in some of the conversations we had it really began to really resonate differently, particularly with some of your board. You know, your leadership team lives a day in and day out. But I think some of your board really kind of took a step back and said, wow, this is much bigger than what maybe we all thought. It's kind of like seeing all the pieces and parts come together. And I think that with that, it's those partnerships and those relationships are really crucial because with so much change in the industry, you can't do it all yourself. You kind of have those relationships to kind of keep focused on that and figure out how does that apply to your own business? Would you agree, Stacey? Oh, totally agree. There are so many specialties and complexities in programs like this. And so having vendors that you can work with and trust as true partners, and then those analysts and, and other business partners you may have, the relationships and the trust that you develop with those relationships is just vital because there are so many twists and turns that come along the way 
that uh, you need to count on those trusted advisors that you've developed in your network to really continue to give you good guidance and advice. So you guys have really been on that digital transformation and you've really accomplished a lot of significant things and you've been recognized for it in some uh, different industry awards. Talk about your journey, where you guys started, where you are in that journey and where you're heading. And I think one of the key things is that the journey never really ends because the industry is constantly changing. So kind of give us your perspective on that. Well, we've got a great story, Denise. At MMG, we've been a company who over the years has had the benefit of having a lot of great tech talent. So we've been that traditional carrier that has all of our own proprietary systems that were built in-house and maintained by our own staff. Policy billing, claims, document management, portal, agency management, uh, down to salary and compensation. So all of those things we had developed and maintained in-house. We went through a, an exercise eight or nine years ago that looked at the number of capabilities we needed in the market in the next five years. And that analysis showed that it was going to take 15 years for us to do. <laughs> oh, wow. And so it was very apparent that we couldn't continue the model we'd been following, which up to that point, had been very successful. It made us nimble. Our technology was an asset and it allowed us to be nimble in the marketplace. So we knew we had to make some major investments to start working with some outside parties, go from a, a build versus buy mentality to now a, a buy <laughs> versus build. And that's what we did. And, and since, you know, Majesco has been one of those key foundational partners for us in the core insurance system arena. So that's where we were. We've since, uh, you know, been working with Majesco for several years now. We have implemented enterprise billing. We have policy and claims implemented as well for a couple of products. We've implemented EDW. And as mentioned earlier, we're live with some digital first capabilities in our portal, quoted submission for some of our commercial lines products. So we're really excited about that. What's left in our journey is continue to migrate legacy products into the new Majesco system. And as we do that, we're anticipating being able to take advantage of several insure tech opportunities, improving some of our digital channel processes. You know, your core transformation has really seen some tremendous operational benefits. You've heard me speak about a two-speed strategy, operational innovation, and then there's kind of strategic innovation. And you guys have really focus quite frankly on both, because not only are you kind of transforming your existing, but you really have substantially changed your business model, as you talked about, so that you can take advantage of some more strategic things. And I think with that, you've begun to get recognition as an organization with a NAMIC Award in Innovation and Business Rules Excellent winner. So talk about that business and the IT transformation and how leadership and that vision was so crucial. Thank you, Denise. Those were great awards, and we were really pleased to receive those. And this is a great question. These programs are hard. They really are. And uh, actually, I was talking about that in a meeting this morning. These transformational programs are complex. They're expensive. They require a lot of specialty skill sets. So leadership is absolutely vital. And being disciplined and patient as you continue to work through challenges and obstacles is so, so important. And so it starts with the top. Good executive support for these programs is so important. And then empowering decision-making at multiple levels in the organization so that you can continue to move things forward at a fast enough pace. These programs go fast and delays cost a lot of money. Enabling that decision-making at multiple levels is vital and delegating that responsibility is so important. Part of that was MMG had to invest in several different areas to continue to mature our internal capabilities. And so some of those come back to the awards that you mentioned, investing in areas like business analysis, quality assurance, project management, enterprise architecture, release management, and so many others were important for us. And we've got really good stories to tell there. For a small regional insurer, you guys are really, I think, really innovative and very forward thinking. And in particular, one of the areas that has always impressed me is around data and analytics. And much of what we write about in the industry is that data today is so crucial in this digital age of insurance. And you guys have been really kind of focused in on that. You've got some talent there that have been able to 
not just use the EDW and the business intelligence tool, but also starting to leverage the data from, from other analytics perspective and using some different data sources. Talk about that because you guys have a phenomenal story that for a lot of smaller insurers that are similar, you know, from a regional perspective, this can be done. Oh, it can be. And this is one area I'm super excited about, Denise. We have some very recent announcements that are going to be game changing for MMG in the future. And I'll get to that in a second. This program, this transformational program that we've been under for quite a few years now with Majesco is the benefit we've been making big investments. As you know, I've heard you talk about in many of your webinars and speaking engagements and several people at Majesco as well, data is table stakes. And so many of these skill sets and capabilities are just becoming common amongst insurers and, uh, and all the vendors that are supporting our industry. At MMG, we've been investing so much in data. With Majesco, we've built our first data warehouse, and that's directly related to the Majesco suite. But we've also incorporated all, all of our legacy data as well. And so that was a huge investment for us. But beyond the technology are all the other things like governance, standards, technology, skill sets. But most importantly for MMG, it was about staffing. And so over the past couple of years, we've been able to put together a really good group of data focused individuals, their skill sets, such that it's finally made sense for us to create a, a new business department uh, called Data Analytics and Insights. And we're so pleased to be able to form that department with this group of data-focused individuals that can create focus and accelerated momentum on achieving some of our enterprise priorities. So we're really excited about that. This year, we've got a couple exciting initiatives that we're focused on to enable us to quickly work with external data sources. So we will be doing a data-like engagement and getting one of those stood up as well as implementing a data catalog so that we can inventory all of the assets that we have and make sure all of that stays organized as we continue to grow. More exciting things ahead, Stacy. It's amazing what you guys have accomplished. And every time I interact with your team, uh, whether it's on the core stuff or it's over here on the data and analytics, I'm just so impressed with the insights and the expertise that you guys have been able to attract as a smaller insurer. And it gives hope, I think, for a lot of others out there that they can do the same, but they have to have vision and leadership. I agree. <laughs> and I hope they see it the same way. It isn't easy, but hard work, persistence, and dedication, you know, good conversations with multiple different carriers is, is always helpful. Something that we are thrilled with, and I know you guys are as well, is you recently launched your new digital solution for agents. You took a much different approach than the traditional, I'm going to put in quotes, portal approach, the agent portal approach that we've seen the last five to 10 years. Talk about that and what's been the reaction for your agents and staff? We have a really good story here, Denise, with our portal. Like our other parts of our insurance systems, this was one of those systems that needed, needed a new tech stack. Uh, it was getting old and, and the technology was brittle and took a long time to maintain. So instead of a traditional build versus buy, we didn't want to build and go through the commitment it takes there with all the specialty skill sets and tech requirements. We also didn't want to buy and have something that several of our competitors were using as well. At the same time we were making this decision, Majesco announced their digital first platform as a, as a you know, and the eco exchange, which would enable carriers to implement digital capabilities and quickly enable third-party integration with uh, other vendors. We uh, were able to get in a beta program with Majesco on that and, and became a believer of the platform and the strategy uh, such that we were able to uh, decide to use this digital first platform as a way to uh, buy, to build, and uh, work with Majesco on building those capabilities, which uh, right now are certainly being very successfully received in our market. And we're excited about that. So we're live in two states. Part of that process was to involve agency feedback right up front. And at a recent demo in one of our agents in Virginia, a commercial lines vice president commented after the demo that it was an impressive demo and asked us if it had been designed by an agent. We were thrilled to get that kind of feedback because it's not a common scenario where carriers are deploying technology that um, really hit directly at what an agent needs to do their work. Um, they've got a very complex series of workflow when they're working with multiple carriers. So 
Uh, so we were really pleased to get that kind of feedback and uh, where it appeared like we had an agent design the system, which, which is in most cases true because we have so much agency feedback all along the way. So, um, so we're really excited about where we are with, uh, with our portal approach and, and that digital first platform and uh, looking forward to rolling out the rest of our states in actually a couple of weeks. That's phenomenal feedback. You rarely get that kind of feedback with any kind of digital uh, capability that it was really designed with that um, with an outside in kind of perspective from the user perspective rather than from the corporate perspective. That's phenomenal, Stacy. We're really excited about it, Denise. You know, looking forward to what else we can do with that platform. One of the things that kind of ties into actually um, both from a digital capability standpoint but also from a core perspective, but also your data and analytics commitment that you've got going on is this whole evolution from what I call kind of business intelligence analytics and maybe predictive to really artificial intelligence and machine learning. And they're obviously the hot topic. That's the buzzword in the industry. Yet it is one of those things that many people write that could be a game changer for a lot of organizations, but also for the industry. What do you see as tremendous opportunities there to create more value and innovation and build on what you guys have already done? Oh, aren't those uh, hot topics for sure? Uh, so many trade articles are focusing on AI and ML right now. And Majesco's had some certainly some recent uh, announcements about those technologies and acquisitions as well. And it, it's such an exciting space right now. Uh, we've been in more of a core system replacement mode where most of our resources have been going to getting new systems up and going. So we have been somewhat sidelined in, in watching and uh, evaluating the use cases. But as we get our core systems in place and now starting to see with Majesco policy and claims gearing right up into full speed, some use cases that actually might work for AI and ML. And right now we're seeing most of those opportunities in our new business uh, processes you know, such as application submission um, yep. and loss control. And so we've got some active dialogues going on there and, and certainly watching that space very closely to, to make sure that as we're continuing our core system journey, that we're taking advantage of opportunities when it makes sense to incorporate some of these new and exciting technologies. Well, having the foundation of the core, uh, what you've done with data and analytics and what you're doing with digital, those foundations in place, you can really take advantage of that and probably accelerate and even in some cases uh, leapfrog over some others out there in the industry that don't have that really uh, robust, solid foundation that that you guys have built. So congrats to you guys. Oh, thank you. It's, it's about getting those foundations in place. It's a long journey and it's a tough journey, but it certainly feels good when you get there. And I can tell you all the hard work is feeling like it's starting to pay off right now. So uh, we've got to be diligent, be patient, and continue to move forward step by yep. step. So you know me, you love to tease me about it, that I like these broad questions and kind of, you know, bigger thinking. Let's move into one of those. As you guys continue to evolve and evolve as the industry evolves, what do you see as the future of insurance? Kind of step back and you guys are kind of thinking strategically. Oh, thank you, Denise. I know you love these questions, these broad <laughs> questions that can go a hundred different ways. When I think of the future of insurance, oh, the first thing that jumps to mind is change. It is evolving fast. Products are evolving fast. The economy is evolving fast right now. Capabilities and tech are continuing to evolve. I thought it was super interesting at a recent Majesco Product Council a couple of weeks ago, actually. Adam Elster used a comment about the technology industry, and, and there are kind of two absolutes. One is that technology is going to change, and Two, uh, we're going to continue to underestimate the pace at which it will change. It's a tough question, but I think certainly enabling your business to embrace change and roll with the evolution as it comes is certainly going to allow to ongoing success. So I can probably guess what you're going to pick, but uh, how I always like to end these uh, podcasts is I like you to pick one word to describe the future. And why uh, did you use that? So I'm going to guess what you're going to pick here. So Stacy, what are you picking? One word is hard. The first word I would say is change. And I'm going to follow it quickly by fun. There is going to be a lot of change, but it's so important to have fun 
align with partners that you enjoy working with. Denise, you're certainly one of those and Majesco. So that's what I'm going to choose. Love it. Well, Stacey, I love having the conversation with you. You guys have always been very forward thinking, very thoughtful in your thinking, really open to new ideas. But then to your point, you put a plan together and you're very diligent and you're very, very specific at executing that and being patient. I think that word patience is something that is really important because you can't just go from A to Z in an hour. It's going to take time and it's going to take that leadership and that patience to really get there. And you guys have done a tremendous job. And so hats off to you and kudos to you, the entire team there at MMG. And we're excited about the future and, and the things that we'll be able to do together. We're excited too, Denise. And, um, and I look forward to it and appreciate the time spent with you here today. So thank you. Thank you, Stacy. That's it for this week's episode of Future of Insurance Industry Leaders podcast. Subscribe to our market-leading podcast series available wherever you get your podcast from. Thank you for listening and be sure to tune in the next time. Mm-hmm.